Hey guys, I'm in the basement of my house and I have a 3D printer review for you. Last year I reviewed the Anycubic Mega S, which is actually right over there, which I used for a really big project, printing a 3D printed surfboard. And if you haven't, go check out that video too. What I have beside me right here is the Anycubic Mega Zero, a recently released budget 3D printer. So this printer came up on my Amazon suggestions and when I saw the price, I figured I could use another 3D printer, especially since I may make another iteration of my 3D printed surfboard and well, having two printers will vastly speed up production. So let's go back and show you my unboxing and assembly of this printer and then I'll talk a bit about my experience with this printer afterwards. Well, I did not realize this printer requires some assembly. What do we got here? Power cord, part filament, an AC-DC converter adapter, filament holder looks like, scraper, lead screw, stepper motors, control panel. This is the hot end, I guess, arm with the belt. And that is my 3D printer going in the background. The other Anycubic running that I've already done a review on. So these are the gantry arms or the arms of the printer. So it's the base and the print surface. Wheels to level the base, they're nice and big. go over all the parts now that I have it unboxed really quickly. We have a lead screw, extruder, stepper motors, gantry arms I believe, the base of the printer, the print base itself. Then over here, sorry about the 3D printer already going. I've already done a review of this printer here, the Anycubic Mega S, and I'm actually printing some headbands for the COVID uh, shortage of PPE to help out with that. Uh, that's actually what I'm going to put this printer to use right away once I get this assembled. So over here I have the control panel, the hot end which is connected to a wiring harness which is connected to the control panel, stepper motor here, and then a bunch of the miscellaneous screws and everything. All of the hex screws, tools to actually assemble the printer, a pair of nippers, standard power cord for a computer, scraper, a little bit of PLA, the power adapter, filament holder, mini USB, end switch, contact information, and also the assembly instructions. All right, I didn't time this very well. I'm gonna wait until the 3D printer is done printing and then I'll do the assembly because I don't want to disturb that printer if I shake this table too much. Want to make sure that the flat surface mates up against the set screws. Z switch, or as I like to call it, an end switch. When installing the right hand side gantry arm, make sure that the screws face outward on this one. Don't do what I did, I actually had to switch this around. I'm gonna install the top bead now. The side with the four holes goes on the side with the extruder.
it's time to wire everything up with the extruder motor. So on the wiring harness, we have the label E here. That stands for extruder. For the X axis here, we have the label X. For the Z limit switch, N switch, we have Z. For the Z stepper motor. For the Y N switch, limit switch. And lastly, the Y axis. Now I'm just going to bring the leveling wheels all the way down to the very bottom. So that way, when we turn the machine on, it doesn't bottle, bottom out on the glass plate. But what I really like about these wheels is they're larger than, the, than on the Anycubic Mega S. And it even marks out that it says down which direction to turn it. Over here on the Mega S, it's not marked or anything. So sometimes I get confused on which way to turn it. She's hooked up, she's turned on. I've turned off my other printer so you get a sense of how loud this printer is with just the fans on, just at idle. It's, I find this is a lot quieter than the Mega S. So I could hook up OctoPrint to this, but I'm going to just follow the instructions and I'm going to use their SD card and just do a test print of, I think it's a set of owls. So total time for assembly took about an hour. It took me a little longer because I was filming this. I think you could do this very quickly, anyone with any mechanical ability. And even if you don't, the instructions are very easy to follow. Compared to the Mega S, the Mega Zero does come a lot more disassembled. Since this is not a heated bed, I do need to apply something to this glass plate. I know they have this textured surface that you can probably just directly print on, but I'm going to print on blue painter's tape. That's my preferred material to print on. I have this nice wide roll of painter's tape. The really nice thing about the Anycubic Mega S is they have a print bed that has this weird heated this weird heated print bed that you can just print directly on and then it uh, once it cools off the print just comes right off. The only disadvantage is, is I have worn out mine. So I've been using just blue painters tape on that printer as well and I've had no issues with adhesion. Now that I have it level, I'm just going to recheck all my corners and adjust if necessary. You just want it so there's a slight bit of tension. Alright, we're good. Let's print. The hot end seems to be working. I'll preheat the nozzle, load the filament in, and then do a test print. All right, let's load some filament. Now they tell you to load it using certain steps. I'm just gonna feed it in manually because it's way quicker. All right, we're up to temperature. Fairly quiet. 
I'm going to load the filament in until it extrudes a little out. Alright, this is the built this is the SD card that came with the printer and they like using this OWL G-code file to do the test print. So I'm just going to do this and we'll let it go. See how it comes out. G-code print temp for the owls is set at 190. I'm going to bump it up to 200 because the PLA filament I have in uh, just likes a little hotter temperature. So I like that on here you can do all, you can tune and control everything on the fly, just like most printers, but this works really well. You can't really see, but um, I can notice that the bottom few layers were a little bit jaggedy and the extruder wasn't tight enough. So I went back here and I just tightened up the extruder a little bit just to get the filament flowing a little smoother. The thing I really notice is that this printer is super quiet compared to the Anycubic Mega S. So assembly of the printer was fairly straightforward. Anyone that can follow directions can put this together. It took me about an hour and it would have been a lot quicker, but I was, you know, moving the camera around and filming while I was building it. So that slowed me down a bit. I've had this printer and my Mega S running nonstop for the last few days, printing off, well, these Prusa face shield headbands to help fill the gap of PPE until companies can ramp up production. So a piece of plastic goes in front of this. So these are just a stop gap until, uh, until they can get things going. So if you have a 3D printer and want to help out this initiative, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can join a community to help out in your area. So the test print of the OWL that comes on the SD card printed off with no issues. And so did grabbed a copy of Benchy and also ran that off on the printer as well before I started doing any major printing and they both came out really well so I was very happy with that. Currently there is no printer profile for the Mega Zero in Cura yet so all I did was create a custom printer and added the dimensions of the print surface and I also told it that it didn't have um, a heated bed. Also I'll list right here the specs of the printer so you can have a quick look at those. This printer is quiet compared to my Mega S as I mentioned before but I think that's because the power supply is smaller it doesn't have a fan so it probably doesn't need a power supply that big because it doesn't have a heated print bed and mainly due to that this is marketed as an entry-level 3d printer this printer doesn't come with any extra stuff like extra print nozzles or tweezers or any tools except for the little scraper but that probably contributes to the affordable price of only 150 us dollars and that's all this printer costs. So it's pretty inexpensive. So loading filament into the printer is really easy and the extruder seems robust enough, but I do worry that the handle on it, uh, on the extruder to load filament may break over time since it is plastic and it's gonna get a lot of stress on it repeatedly every time you load filament in and out of it. The aluminum frame seems rigid enough and the design is well, it's interesting with only one lead screw on the right hand side. The hot end looks to be smaller too than the Mega S, so it probably won't be able to handle larger print nozzle sizes. And the print surface isn't anything fancy. It's just a piece of glass with a coating on it, but it was very easy to level. And I like using blue painters tape on top of it for the for a layer of adhesion and it works really well. I have, haven't had any issues with it. I'm not sure if the Mega Zero has thermal runaway protection enabled, so I need to get around to do a test on it to make sure that that works because I don't want to burn anything down. And it also has a resume function in case uh, you have a power outage 
and when you're printing you can resume your print and you can also use it to pause the print and then maybe change the filament if you want to change a color or if you're getting close to running out of filament there doesn't seem to be any filament runout sensor either so that not all that important but just something to note but for a budget 3d printer this thing so far seems to perform excellent if you're just getting into 3d printing i'd highly recommend it but just keep in mind that it doesn't have a heated print bed so you won't be able to print plastics that need that such as like abs i've only had this printer running for a few days now but i'm very impressed with it so far and it's going to be operating for 24 hours a day along with my mega s printing off headbands for the foreseeable future now next steps for me is i may get opto print hooked up to it and the spaghetti detective I'll get a better sense of how well this printer works and how well it holds up in the uh, long run because I'm going to be doing a lot of printing here in the next little while. So I'll make sure to post a follow-up video in the next few weeks or months after my extended usage. So far, for $150, I'm very impressed with this printer. So I'd recommend it if you're just looking for a budget printer. I think this will meet most people's need. So that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys in the next video.